Hey everybody, this is Ryan Mallory with the Stock Market Bubble Update. What a wild week it was. I mean, we had news coming out of the White House that Joe Biden's looking to tax capital gains for the long term all the way up to 40%. You have Janet Yellen. She's looking at taxing cryptocurrency gains up to 80%. It was a wild week. I mean, we have enough problems trying to deal with Daddy j Pal. Now we got to talk about Grandma Yellen on a regular basis. We started off the week, we sold off two straight days. On Wednesday, we had a dramatic rally. Thursday, we tried to follow through on that rally, but we had a dramatic sell-off there into the close because of the news out of the White House and the US Treasury. Friday, we rebounded like it never even happened. On the week, the S&P 500 closed down 0.1%. You had the NASDAQ 100 down 0.8%. You had the NASDAQ composite, it was down 0.3%. And the Russell 2000 was up a half percent. So it was a mixed market on the week with the large caps selling off, the small caps rallying just a little bit. But if you thought this week was wild, wait until next week when the earnings season really gets kicked into high gear here. You got Facebook, you got Apple, you got Amazon, you got Google, Microsoft, and Tesla all reporting next week. That's gonna create a lot of volatility. You're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars of market cap being reported next week and then you got the week after that's also busy but there's nothing like this week here and so while there's a lot of good trade setups in these fang stocks and with tesla look i had to take my gains in tesla on friday why because i'm not going to hold through the monday earnings announcement and why do i not hold through earnings because they're too unpredictable look you can be right on earnings per share you can be right on the revenue you can be right on forward guidance but that doesn't mean you're going to be right about the market reaction and you think, okay, if all these things are good, the stock's gonna go up, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you have some dramatic sell-offs on the best earnings reports. So they're very unpredictable. It's like going to a Las Vegas casino. You never know how those earnings reports are going to turn out. So it's not worth the risk when you can't manage it because the sell-offs can be so dramatic. So we're gonna talk about Dogecoin because that's still big time in the currency world. I think it's a joke, but I'm gonna go through the technical analysis. Most people, when it comes to the cryptocurrencies, they want to sell you this story. They want to tell you how it's going to go to a dollar, or it's going to go to the moon, or you're going to colonize Mars. I'm just here to give you the technical analysis. I don't care what it does. I'm just here to help you guys out. Also going to get into the S&P 500 and where I see that going forward. But before I get started on that, let me tell you real quick, make sure to click join below. It's my YouTube membership here. It's really awesome. You're going to get all my market research each and every day. That's going to include multiple updates each week on my bullish and bearish watch lists. You're always going to know which stocks I'm high on and which ones I'm not so high on. On top of that, you're going to get my daily setups every day, as well as the most intriguing charts of the day, multiple updates each week on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000, plus updates on all the FANG stocks, plus Microsoft and Tesla. So let's start off right now with Dogecoin. Look, I thought the crowd mentality on GameStop was strong. Here's what you're dealing with on Dogecoin. You got a lot of people who are basically saying, I missed out on GameStop. I'm not missing out on Dogecoin this time. So they're loading up. They think that it's going to do the same thing that GameStop did. They're going to make massive amounts of money. And look, it already did. It's gone from five cents. It went up to 45 cents. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Now we're starting to see the sell off. And it was with a hit piece coming out of the, the US Treasury talking about hitting cryptocurrency gains with about 80% in taxes. No, that's not cool at all. But essentially what you have and that's what I've always said. If you go back in some of my other videos, I've talked about it plenty of times. The Federal Reserve and the U.S. government, they're never going to let you have a decentralized currency. They're not going to give up the U.S. dollar to Bitcoin or to a Dogecoin or to some other crazy name cryptocurrency. It's just not going to happen in the history of the world. It's never happened. And if it gets too out of control, guess what they're going to do? They're going to regulate it into oblivion. And that's what they're trying to do here. 80% tax, that's them trying to destroy the crypto market. But let's talk about the Dogecoin pump, okay? This is typical. We saw it with GameStop. We've seen it with a host of other stocks over the course of many years, decades, even centuries. What happens is you get the basing and then you get the breakout. It goes to heights that no one ever imagined. Then it has this minor pullback and all those people who are mad at themselves for missing out on it the first time, jumping it then, it pushes it right back up, but it doesn't quite go up to all time highs. Instead, it starts to pull back and then you get the dramatic sell off. What looks like is happening right now is that dramatic sell off. You got a second wave of people that are trying to come in and say, okay, this is my time to buy it. We've gone from 45 cents all the way down to 15 cents. I'm gonna jump in on it this time. You'll get this reflex bounce, but ultimately I don't see it doing anything but going back into the single digits. I know everybody wants to talk about it going to a dollar. I've heard people talk about holding it for over a year so they don't have to pay short-term capital gains. That's fine. That's not something that I'd be worried about if I have a stock that just went from pennies per coin all the way up to 45 cents. That's just not good to do. Check out this hourly chart. It's kind of a messy chart, but what you have here is some serious resistance at 34 cents. So right now with it hovering around this 29 to 30 cents 
per coin, there's going to be an opportunity for it to go back up to 34. But if it can't push back through that and it sells off, where do I see the downside? Well, you go back to the daily chart, it's at that seven to eight cents a coin where it originally broke out at. So you have a lot of downside here. You have about four to five cents of upside before it hits any serious resistance. And to the downside, you got about 23 cents. So it's almost an eight to one reward to risk. But instead of the reward being the eight, the risk is being the eight. It's not worth it. And I know a lot of you guys are worried about missing out. And if it goes up to a dollar, fine. I tip my hat to you. I'm just looking at the chart before we know what the future holds. And so I'm giving it my best analysis like anybody else. I'm looking at the charts and trying to diagnose it for everything that it says. And right now that resistance at 34, there's been a lot of reversals at that level. And I definitely see it happening once again, if it gets tested. And whether it's GME, AMC, Blackberry, or Dogecoin, the one thing that's trying to happen here is people are trying to stay relevant. They have interests at stake here. You take somebody like Rory and Kitty, he's become very popular in the news. But if GameStop doesn't rally, guess what? He won't be as relevant as he once was. So he's trying to stay relevant. He's trying to double down on his positions. And he wants you all to know about it because he wants to stay relevant. You take something like Dogecoin. Everybody keeps saying, oh, it's going to go to a dollar. It's going to go to a dollar. Why? Because they want that investment to stay relevant. And you got to kind of look beyond the market noise and look beyond the hype and see what is it actually telling you on the charts. Map out the reward, map out the risk, make your decision there. Now, before I get into the S&P 500, let's look at the T2108 chart. This right here is going to tell you how strong this market rally is of late. I've been highlighting it in a lot of my recent videos. What you're seeing right here is a continued drip lower on the weekly chart. There's less and less stocks participating in this current market rally. And if you look at the S&P 500, we're actually at all time highs. So what gives? It means that the bigger stocks are what's moving the stock market higher. And you've got all of them reporting earnings this week. And if they don't perform, there's a good chance you're going to see a massive pullback as a result. So it's going to be very important for your large cap tech stocks to do well this week with their earnings. Like they can't pull a Netflix or it's going to kill the market. Now, check out the S&P 500 on the daily chart. You have a nice bull flag here. It's setting up for another move higher. Again, that's going to depend on how this earnings week goes, because I think that's going to be the main driver in the market. If it does, you're going to get that breakout out of the bull flag Woo! and it will have another leg higher. And check out the rising channel that's also still in play with the S&P 500. Notice too though, within this channel, how price continues to hug that lower band a little bit more and more as time goes along. It's not really making moves towards that upper channel anymore. It's there, but it doesn't really want to test it. So on this daily chart, if we do pull back, there's two layers of support. You have one in the short term, and you also have a similar support level going off of the March lows from last year. So both of those are in play if we have any kind of pullback. Now, why is the market not really seeing these massive gains higher like what we saw in the beginning of the bounce off the March lows from 2020, like in March and like in April and May, or what we saw in November, December, and January? Well, the reason for that is that we're kind of like in this limited reward mode now. People are willing to buy any kind of a dip and push it right back to all-time highs, but at those all-time highs, there's not a lot of new buyers. There's buyers below, but there's not a buyers above, and so there's a a lack of initiative for the market to really push higher to and really expand the price range in the current market. That's why you're seeing the volatility drop down to 17. And that's why you're seeing a, some very low volume. And it's only going to get lower and lower as we creep into the summer months as well. Now, where does the S&P 500 pull back if the FANG stocks underperform? Well, you have this nice rising trend line off of the March lows from last year, just like what I showed you on the daily chart. If it pulls back and tests that level, that's gonna be around the 404 to 405 area. And that's gonna be key for it to hold that level and bounce. But if it doesn't, there's not a lot of support underneath until you get to like the 375 to 380 area, depending on how long of a pullback it undergoes. So those are your two scenarios there that I would be watching for. I wouldn't go ahead and like sell the farm and expect it to pull all the way back to that 375 to 380 just yet. It needs to break some other support levels first, namely the one that I just showed you with the rising channel off of the March lows. Remember too, just because you made a lot of gains last year on the in the early going off of that bounce and just because you made a lot in gains off of November and December's rally doesn't mean that you should have the same expectations for the market. You have to take what the market gives you. And so loading up because you're not necessarily making a lot of money with a few positions is not the right strategy. You want to only take those setups that are offered to you. Don't trade the market based on your needs or what your wants are. Trade it based off of what the market's willing to give you. And remember this, it's better to be right with just a few positions than it is to be wrong with a lot of positions. Because oftentimes when you really load up, being desperate to make those gains, that's when you suffer your biggest losses in the stock market. So remember, risk management is always going to be key when you're sitting at these all-time highs and you've got a lot of big events coming up this week with all the FANG stocks, you don't need to go heavy into these earnings plays. 
because they're very dangerous and they're very unpredictable. If you enjoyed this video, I'd encourage you to like and subscribe down below. It is really the lifeblood for this channel. It helps me to get my videos out to more and more people and to continue to grow this and allow me to make these great videos for you each and every week. Tell me down in the comments below. What are your plans with the FANG stocks if you have them? Are you making any plays with them? I want to hear all about that. Thank you guys and God bless.